Hello there, welcome to Sightline. Today I have Mr. Mark Koenig. He is the country representative of the Asian Foundation. And today we are going to talk about the Youth Voices Summit 2019. So hello, Mr. Mark, and thank you for accepting my request. Thank you for having me today. Happy to be here. So first of all, I would like to know about the event Youth Voices Summit. Sure. Well, this is an event the Asia Foundation is co-organizing with six other NGOs. And the idea is to have a platform for young people to come together and talk about the wide range of ways they can have a positive impact on society and Mongolia's development. So um, the idea is to have a wide range of platforms, events, discussions mm -hmm. that are entertaining, engaging, and varied on a wide range of topics. So we have topics like political participation, mm -hmm. topics like recycling, mm -hmm. urban planning, uh, ethics, corruption, good governance. So critical issues for Mongolia. But we want young people to come out and share their opinions, share their ideas, and listen to each other. It's an event really focused on youth voices, mm -hmm. young people talking to young people. Mm -hmm. So on the stage, we expect to have a pretty young crowd of facilitators, moderators, entertainers, and others who are gonna really share their viewpoints, but also generate some ideas, generate some content that we hope young people who attend mm -hmm. will uh, take forward with them into the future and help them find ways that they as individuals can make a difference here in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that the event is organized here in Mongolia and also in this year. And also I would like to ask that how actually the youth voices are heard for, to the public? Mm. Well, for our event specifically, um, there's two different platforms. Obviously, we have media engagement. Obviously, we are going to have a big social media presence. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of how young people can get engaged, how their voices can matter, is really important to us. And there's not just one answer. Mm -hmm. Every individual has to find their own voice and their own pathway. And young people are often suffering from a kind of... Um, conscious decision not to engage. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was young, I certainly remember, younger, I'm not that old, but when I, was, <laughs> when I was younger, I certainly remember consciously decided not to speak out on issues I care about. Maybe it wasn't cool, maybe it wasn't something my peers were interested in as well. Mm -hmm. And what's really important to us is provide platforms where young people can feel comfortable caring mm -hmm. and saying they care and showing their passion. But it doesn't have to be all the same. So some young people may want to get involved in local government decisions asking for transparency, asking for uh, information on how public budgets are being expended. So we'll have a session that talks about tools for how do you hold your government to account for bu budgetary spending. Mm -hmm. Some young people may want to go into politics. Mm -hmm. Maybe they want to run for office, maybe they want to join a party. That's a valid choice too. It's not right for everyone, but for some people that's an excellent way to add value. We want to have sessions that talk about the realities of political participation. Mm -hmm. It's not all pretty, it's not all easy, but it's something that you can do. We also are going to have sessions on things like the environment. So one of the ways that you as an individual can contribute is just by being more conscious of your behaviors and how it influences the environment. Mm -hmm. You can start composting, reduce your food waste. You can use less plastic. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we're going to try our best to have a no plastic event, mm -hmm. no plastic water bottles. So we're asking all of our participants, a thousand of them, please bring your own water bottle. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Uh -huh. We're going to have about 500 water bottles available as a giveaway. Mm -hmm. And to get a water bottle, you have to bring three plastic bottles and trade it in, and then we'll recycle the plastic bottles for you, and you get a reusable water bottle. Mm -hmm. And we hope it's a symbol of saying, Going forward, you can make a difference even in this small way. So we don't want to say there's one way for youth to contribute. There's a million ways. But in any democracy, in any country, an engaged youth is a fantastic asset. And the energy, joy, excitement, and passion that young people have mm -hmm. is something that you need to uh, promote. It's something you need to engage and deepen. And any country, not just Mongolia, will be better off if we are able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting and it's a really good initiative for the other organizations who are going to organize many types of summits and mm -hmm. other events. In which sector actually the youth voice is stronger and which sector the youth voice is weaker now? Mm. 
Well, one of the challenges we see in Mongolia is a widespread disaffection with politics and governance. Mm -hmm. There's a rising frustration. And with a lot of young people I've spoken to, you hear a sense that they don't see political participation as a viable pathway to express their opinions. They don't feel listened to. They don't feel like they have an opportunity. Um, you'll talk to young people who think they could be a good politician, mm -hmm. but they have trouble getting breaking out through the current party structure. Um, and so I think in general, what we'd like to say is there's a role for young people in governance, mm -hmm. and it's not easy. We're not trying to sugarcoat it. We're not trying to say it's necessarily going to work out for you. Not everybody can be an MP. Not everybody can be the prime minister. But there's still ways to get engaged. What we're seeing is Mongolia has a very high capacity young population. Yes. People are getting fantastic degrees abroad, in country. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you meet people with strong human resources. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily see all of those people finding roles in the public sector. You see new ideas in the private sector. Entrepreneurship seems to be coming ahead. You see a I lot of great also, young yeah. people trying to join NGOs and INGOs. But I think one of the places where we need more focus is to have environments in government, civil service, uh, in the parties, in government halls, that allow young people's voices to be heard mm -hmm. and, and, and to enter into it. Um, young people's voices uh, should be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it should depend on your individual capacity and your attitude and your age. Uh, I'm sorry, not your age. Mm -hmm. Anything else mm -hmm. can help you decide where you can fit in. So um, I think we need to stimulate more engagement in governance. And that's one of our focuses. Mm -hmm. But we're not pushing everybody that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be an activist, that's a fantastic thing to do as well. If you just want to be with your friends and engage them and find out small ways that you can make a difference, that's great. Mm -hmm. One of our sessions is about urban planning. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're trying to talk about is the city isn't something that somebody's building for you. Yeah. It's something shaped by people. So if you feel strongly about how a green park should be used, mm -hmm. there are ways for you to raise your voice and talk about it. So whatever the issue, uh, we want young people to have agency feel compelled to get involved and it's not easy not everyone's going to listen to you it's it's not the easiest thing to get things done but if you don't try um, you're going to waste all that young energy and you're going to look back with regret when you're left with decisions that were made for you that you have to live with when you become the next generation of leaders and everything else mm -hmm. Now I would like to ask about the scope of the event mm -hmm. and how many uh, actually uh, youth uh, generation are registered and also is it actually covers the people with the special needs, people with mm -hmm. uh, disabilities? Right. Well, um, we have had an online registration mm -hmm. and we've had fantastic response. We have 1,200 people registered online. Yeah, that's uh, a big number. It's a good number. Yeah, we're really happy with the number. A um, couple hundred are from the countryside. Uh -huh. uh, we've offered uh, small travel assistance for some people to come in. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure it's, we have some geographic diversity. Uh, we have another set of young people who are volunteering, mm -hmm. probably about 160 university students as well as NGO staff. Mm -hmm. We're going to come out and help us organize the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have some groups with, that need special assistance, mm -hmm. whether they have visual uh, impairment or whether they have a need sign interpretation. Um, we've proactively reached out to some different associations mm -hmm. that are doing a great job trying to help people uh, get access to these kind of events that wouldn't usually. Mm -hmm. So there will be sign interpretation throughout the two days. Um, we have a small group coming from the Down Syndrome Association. Mm -hmm. We've reached out to groups like the LGBT Center, which is a fantastic organization trying to help a wide range of diverse young people. Um, and we've really tried to make sure that everybody knows they're welcome and that their voices matter. And um, we're coming together as young people, and young people are diverse, mm -hmm. they're different, um, all sorts of interests, feelings, and approaches to life, and we want to have as many of those voices represented as we can. Mm -hmm. um, the event 
it opens here uh, in this beautiful building in the Cultural Palace. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a big opening uh, where we can fit all thousand people together. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to disperse to the Tushin Hotel and the Blue Sky Hotel. And there's going to be different sessions in different places. So we want people to come in, engage, pick the session they like, pick mm -hmm. the session that matches their interests, and then find uh, a place for their voice to, to be heard and to be uh, excited about. What about high school students? Are there a youth or kids? <laughs> yes. No, um, we have a hundred uh, high school students that are coming as well. Uh -huh. We yes. also have some speakers mm -hmm. of high school age. We have a, a group of young under 18s who are talking about uh, corruption and ethics. Uh, we have some young people who have a uh, participated in an essay contest uh -huh. and some of the best essays we had were from high school students. Oh, wow. So um, we are having a group there. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, have rules about chaperoning and making sure mm -hmm. that they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, but we absolutely want to hear as many voices as we can. So we've defined youth as kind of we're looking for 16 to 35 in our event. Mm -hmm. uh, and the average age we'll see on the day, probably something in the 20s. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're sorry to all the 36-year-olds, <laughs> but uh, we, we ha you have to draw the line uh, somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, it should be a diverse age group. Um, we hope to have both young men and women come out. Mm -hmm. uh, in Mongolia, you often have a challenge where young women are more engaged on mm -hmm. these kinds of issues. Um, but we're hoping to have good representation on the gender side mm -hmm. as well. What actually the age range? Uh, so we have, uh, I think, 15 to 35. Okay, That's great. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the average will be right somewhere in the middle, in uh -huh. the mid to late 20s. Yeah. Great. And also there are many types of youth voices, uh, events are organizing in the world, and mm -hmm. also the United Nations are organizing this mm -hmm. type of events annually. And what are the specific of this event in Mongolia? Well, our event, I think, has a couple different principles. Mm -hmm. One is it's we try as much as we can to make it a for youth by youth approach. Mm -hmm. So we have a fantastic advisory committee of 11 young Mongolian leaders and they are delivering a lot of the content themselves. They're planning it and us as the NGOs are giving them a lot of freedom because um, I know you can tell by looking at me I don't know what young Mongolians want because I'm not a young Mongolian. And so uh, I've actually had to learn about all sorts of popular bands and I've been YouTubing recently because we're trying to have entertainment. Mm -hmm. And if you made me do the entertainment, nobody would like it here, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really have tried to have this principle of for youth, by youth. Mm -hmm. um, and we've tried to have uh, speakers that are speaking to the moment we have now. And we've picked issues that are relevant to Mongolia now. Uh, and everything will have substance and context in it. It's not general principles taken from around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something really developed here and for this moment. And that's, I think, what makes the event special. But we absolutely see ourselves as a part of this family of youth engagement. And it's an important conversation. And the United Nations and even government have some fantastic mechanisms through which youth can get involved. Mm -hmm. um, but we see our event as contributing to a broader platform. Mm -hmm. um, and there's space for everyone to, to, to get involved. I think this is a, one of the larger youth events that's been held in Mongolia recently. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the ones with the most freedom given to our speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't come out of it with, we need to accomplish these three things as an NGO. What we're looking for is energy, excitement, uh, dynamism. And I'm expecting to hear things I never predicted to hear. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And 90% of our impact may not be what happens in the room during the event. It might be what happens in the hallway afterwards, where two young people meet with an idea that they share and they go on to do something with it. The lunchtime may be the best moment of all. Mm -hmm. Or we end our event at five every day. Whatever happens from five until the next morning, uh, when people are talking, getting excited, uh, we really hope those relationships, those networks have a lot of value as well. Yes, that's right. That's the really important thing is the more than a thousand youths are gathering in one place in one time. And also in this year, the government of Mongolia and the government of United States are declared 2019 as a youth year. And is it uh, connected with this event? Uh, the U.S. Embassy is one of our uh, sponsors for the event. So we have uh, a range of sponsors. So the EU, 
the Canadians, the Swiss Development, uh, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Australian Embassy and the U.S. Embassy have all made contributions. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely it links in part to this uh, Year of Youth campaign. Um, our event is explicitly not linked to government. Mm -hmm. um, we've invited government and said, please come, come listen to young people. Uh, but there's no big speech at the beginning. We're going to start out with drumming, mm -hmm. with some videos, and then with a panel discussion on mm -hmm. why we're here. Um, but it's not going to be like the five standard five-minute speeches. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really supposed to be more free-flowing. And we think there's fantastic things that government is doing to engage youth. Mm -hmm. But this is supposed to be separate. We're not talking to youth. We're trying to bring them together to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's something that um, I think independent NGOs can do quite well. Mm -hmm. And support from partners like the US Embassy enables us to do it effectively. And absolutely, the energy from this event should carry over into all of those other exciting initiatives. And again, we're very happy to be able to partner with these institutions that are already doing so much on youth. The UN as well has some fantastic uh, platforms that are uh, already moving in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And also you're the representative of the Asian Development Bank and the Asian <laughs> Foundation wanted to contribute on this event. Yeah, so uh, the Asia Foundation, um, so in contrast to the Asian Development Bank, <laughs> we're a small uh, international NGO. Mm -hmm. uh, we in Mongolia have a staff of about 30. It's me and 29 uh, Mongolians who are mm -hmm. passionate about development in their country. And our staff itself has a fairly young uh, profile. And we didn't know we were going to get into this, but we were having a lot of conversations about what do we think are the ways that Mongolia can um, move even faster towards rapid development? Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that we can come out of some of the challenges? And knowing how um, we need another wave of progress here in Mongolia. Mongolia has come such a long way in 25 uh, 30 years now mm -hmm. from uh, a vibrant democracy. Uh, economic growth hasn't always been consistent, but it's mm -hmm. been strong. Uh, human capacity is increasing. But there's a need for another push, another, another, uh, another round of reform and, and energy towards development. And a lot of that energy is necessarily going to have to come from young people. It's a majority under 35 country at this mm -hmm. point. If 100% of 35 and unders voted next year, mm -hmm they would decide the, the, the election. Um, young people don't always vote though. Mm -hmm. Young people don't always choose to get engaged. And yet the decisions that we make today will affect young people for 50, 60, 70 years in the future. Uh, and so that long-term vision is really important in a country where short-term cycles of politics decide a lot of policy. Mm -hmm. uh, Mongolia has, has struggled with policy continuity. Mm -hmm. And we think young people can add a lot of value with fresh new ideas, but also to thinking long term. Mm -hmm. It's natural to think longer term if you have more years to, to be around to see what the impacts are going to be. So for the Asia Foundation, um, we aren't here to say what the right path to development is. We're here to support Mongolians to have good conversations, to set that path forward, mm -hmm. and then do whatever we can to assist them in, in making that idea, that vision, a reality. Mm -hmm. So the starting point for us is to talk about it and a platform for young people to talk about these visions and how they want to contribute is an asset that we know will pay dividends for Mongolia. So um, for us, we don't know what the answers are going to be. Mm -hmm. We don't even know what the questions youth are asking each other quite yet. But we're really excited to put this in motion and we're confident that supporting young people to find their voice find this energy, build out their networks, and get excited about the future of this country. Um, there's a lot of things to be negative about, but that, that shouldn't keep some of that positive energy and that excitement from the future from bubbling out into activity. And whatever that activity that we can uh, help, inspire, uh, and support in a small way mm -hmm. will be uh, something that the Asia Foundation is very proud to be a part of. And our goal is to be a development partner for Mongolia, not just the government, for all Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And this is a big part of that process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. And also we say that the event is organizing at the right place at the right time. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here today.
Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next time with more interesting guests. See you next time. Bye-bye.